What's going on? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And if you work in the radio business, I'm sure you have seen this great website from the radiofam.com. Marie is on the show. What's going on? Hi, thanks for having me. Of course. I single-handedly love what you do with radio because you help expose the BS in it, but you also promote the good parts because I work in radio. I've worked in radio for nine years now. And Mm -hmm. I don't like the parody accounts that just talk about like the mean people in radio or the bad parts. Cause to me, that's Mm -hmm. really, that's very bad energy. And then I'm at work feeling grumpy about myself. But like, what I like about your page is it's like, you pump me up. You make me excited to work in the business. Oh my God. I I love that so much. Like that's totally the goal. And I just love hearing that. And it's, you know, anytime I get that positive feedback from people, it's just kind of that stuff that keeps it going, you know? Yeah. So how did you come up with the radiofam.com? Cause I know that you've worked in promotions. So how did this mm-hmm. all begin? Um, it began like it really began as like an Instagram account in 2017. And I was just basing it for like a uh, promotion people. So it was actually originally called radio in the streets, you know? So I was like, well, you know, I promote, you know, I know promotion, so we'll feature that. But it was kind of hard to really find just promotions people, you know? So I was like, well, you know, I want more people to know about it. And so I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to play off, you know, the jock's ego, like a lot of, you know, radio people want to be featured and they want to, you know, so as I started tagging them and everything and they started resharing my stuff and then the account, you know, grew pretty quickly over the past couple of years. It's now, you know, so that was yeah, 2017 and that was that summer. Um, and so now it's, you know, over 9,000 people. So really I was originally, or so I had uh, switched it to the radio fam once I started, you know, playing off the radio DJs and stuff. And that was, probably less than a year into the, when I started it. Um, and then, uh, it just, yeah, it just started to kind of grow. It, oh yeah. That's, that's a rewind. I, um, was doing it to kind of set an example. Like I noticed that people in the industry weren't really, um, like monetizing their social media or anything like that. And I'm like, man, if I was like a radio jock, like I would be doing a lot of the stuff that the influencers doing and stuff like that. And like, you know, so I'm like watching people just not do that. And I'm like, well, I, I can't do it, you know, to, to set an example. So it's kind of like, well, maybe if I like build this up a little bit and I show people that, hey, I can get a couple posts sponsored for like 50 bucks or something like that. I can show people that, hey, you know, like this is some extra money. And then um, as it started to grow, it just kind of turned into a community. <laughs> so then once kind of that happened, it was like, oh, okay. You know, when people really, really like the positive feedback, you know, just like you said. And, um, you know, I started to realize, I mean, I knew that I didn't know everything. And then it was really refreshing to kind of meet people all over, you know, outside my market that were, you know, professionals and just experts at what they do. So it was like, great, you know, they're creating content and, you know, I can start, you know, having like a platform to uplift that positive content and helpful content. So, you know, for example, I don't know if you had seen that series that, uh, how to radio series that Nick Steele had done. Um, you know, I had asked like, Hey, can I feature some of these videos, you know, on my account and stuff? Cause they were really helpful and he was already doing that, you know? And, um, so, you know, just making it be a platform for people to share this information and you know, get help. And really within the last, over the pandemic is when I changed it into, or when I really launched, launched the website and, um, made it like an e-commerce store. And that was really just like kind of you know, going, you know, during the pandemic, being down a YouTube rabbit hole and being like, oh, you know, I've always wanted to kind of do t-shirts and stuff like that, but I didn't know my options, you know, so I learned about some other options. Then I learned some other ways to kind of create merch and that, you know, just other merch. And I really like being creative, you know, so I changed it, you know, added the e-commerce side to it, you know, to kind of help fund some things, you know, because everything I do with the radio fam is funded by my full-time job. <laughs> so yeah, and that's so much more fun to be like just a learning experience thing now because you know I'm learning how to deal with this website, and learning how to do e-commerce and juggle the social media and everything all at once. <laughs> well, what I think is going really well for it too is it doesn't feel toxic because you're not like the typical radio person because I've noticed a lot of the like parody accounts that have gained traction lately on social media and a lot of these mm-hmm. uh, people that will talk about radio are either looking for a job or they don't want to help promote talent because they're afraid they're going to get their job taken. So what I like about you is that I don't view anyone as like a threat and I don't think they do either. It's just everybody promoting radio because to me, the biggest problem with this business is that 
Nobody wants to help out others because you're afraid that you're going to get your job taken. You know what I mean? Exactly. I, I hear that a lot from people. And it just makes me kind of like, I don't want to say sad, but it's like sometimes in radio, I don't know if you feel this, but sometimes I feel like being a loner is the way to go. Cause like for so long, I began right when I graduated in 2012, did some radio in Chicago that worked in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in Tampa and it feels like it's not getting any easier and it feels good to have a place to just vent. You know what I mean? It feels good to have a place where you can just talk to people because there's so many toxic people in this business that it's just like, it's nice to see that, Hey, there's people that talk into the radio mic that are actually nice. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And we're hoping that with social media platforms like this, you know, not only are people able to share things like, Hey, salary amongst people or also being able to share like, Hey, you know, this person's a really bad manager to work with because you know, they're, you know, as we see stories of, you know, sexual harassment or things like that coming out and it's like, you know, that stuff can gain traction a lot more and then, you know, than it could back in the day, you know, and now stuff just goes viral, gets retweeted a few times. And, you know, it's about getting the, uh, yeah, the people that want to be in the industry that are passionate, not yeah. just the people that are there just because they want to be superstars. So what I've also noticed recently, that's been, I would say the most wonderful thing about radio working with social media is, so I grew up in uh, Illinois. So I grew up on all the guy talk shows where they would play a macho character and then they were, mm -hmm. then they were a douchebag off air. And all those guys ended up getting canceled because their content didn't work in current day. But what I like that's happening now is all the like mom and pop shows, like the one that's from uh, Illinois. I don't want to give him the time of day, but the guy from, 101.9 who got put out you would have never thought all my friends moms every single one of them listened to that show and now one of them would have thought that that guy was a creep so that's what i love about social media is now there's a platform where you can either be a shock jock or you could be a hot ac dj but you're going to get called out there's no more hiding it there's no more sweeping it under the rug exactly exactly and it's just, it's very uh, refreshing. It feels like, I think we're going to see a resurgence in radio because I've been listening to a lot of different podcasts with like old time radio guys and they seem to be in denial that unlike the newspaper, it hasn't really died. Right. Yep. I, I do too, especially with the, the uh, digital stuff taking off and I mean, and even the co or, uh, you know COVID kind of kicking it into high gear there. I think it's kind of giving it that extra, you know, that, other chance, you know, for radio to really grab onto that. Cause you know, like we talked about, it's like, now it's not just what's coming out of your FM speakers. It's everywhere else. So it's like, you know, here, here's another chance. Here's play, so many different places we can monetize. Hopefully they can just grab onto that, you know, really just expanding the brand rather than just like, Nope, we got to keep pointing people back to the radio. <laughs> so how much social media do you consume each day? Now, prior to when Facebook went out, that was when I had an epiphany. I was averaging like eight hours on my phone, seven hours sitting at work, sitting at home. And ever since then, I realized that social media is really bad for my mental health. So I've been only on my phone all, let's say, four hours per day. So like for you and social media, do you ever find like you just have to put the phone in the other room and just kind of experience life? Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to do. Um, luckily with the radio fam feed, you know, for the most part, I see more positive than when I like am on my personal page. Yes. So that's always nice. Um, but yeah, for sure. It's definitely hard to do, especially because, you know, yeah, cause it just, ha this account now, what it's grown into has me so connected. Um, but yeah, I really have to like actually force myself. <laughs> do you ever get overwhelmed? Like with, um, just how good things are going. Cause like for me right now, I'm getting a lot of compliments and I swear I'm not making this about me, but, but I'm saying like for uh -huh. so long, I was like the heel of radio and now like things are going really well. And I have this weird introvert shy thing where I'm having a hard time like accepting it. It's very weird. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's very bizarre. Uh, it sounds like it's from, it's the, uh, what is it? Uh, the imposter syndrome. Yes. Um, I've noticed a lot of, and I've, kind of the pattern in talking to people on my podcast too. I try to, I'm always kind of just naturally picking up, you know, personality patterns in people. And that is definitely something that I see with almost every radio pro. I mean, even the most creative, um, confident seeming ones, you're just, they're like, Oh, they all have these same exact, like, wow, you know, do, do I get these? I mean, exactly what you're saying. And do you, do you feel that you, uh, 
got past that because you just kind of kept, you said you were the heel in radio. Do you feel like you just kept pushing and pushing well, and that's why? Uh, I just, I don't want to say I did everything wrong, but I just <laughs> self-sabotaged myself to the fullest because since 2015, I've worked in like shock jock radio and it's changed a lot, but I worked in a show in Cleveland Then I got laid off Then I moved to Tampa. And for so long, the gen X radio was sort of directed at like hating on the millennials. But now that we're all in our late twenties and thirties, it's like, they're being nicer. So it's just, I think it's just, you're, you're seeing things change with age. So for example, I would do a dumb thing at work or whatever. And then I would piss off the afternoon DJ and then everybody would trash me. But that's how I've made a name is that now that I'm really good, it confuses people. It's a, it's, cause like last week I did my first show on the bone. I, uh, I did it from two to four on the weekend and I like, I crushed it. I did well. And what was funny was, I don't know if you've ever had this, but maybe a person, let's say 17 months ago, sent you a DM and it was really mean and then you don't mm -hmm. respond. What was so funny was for the DMs I got were people saying I these like dudes with like their glasses and they're like they're like hummers, those like overcompensating dudes. They were all like, uh -huh. You're never gonna make it in radio, you suck, blah, blah, blah. Cause that's what was being said a year and a half ago. And then what was funny was the next comment was like 17 months later, oh my God, you did great. I'm like I appreciate the love, but I'm like, mm -hmm. I see the message from literally during this pandemic. It wasn't like it was 2015. I just find social media fascinating because when you put the phone down, you realize that it's not a real world. It's just the phone. It's very bizarre. I, yeah. I think that's the whole part of it too, is I am very fascinated by it. And like I said, you know, I'm always picking up on like human patterns and stuff like that. So I do the same thing over social media, you know, and, and it's, funny that you know that you're talking about those exact type of things you know I think I was just talking to a guy the other day on my podcast and he's gonna says the same thing you know originally you know he kept wanting shots on the air and everybody's like eh, you know we don't like your voice we don't like your voice and um you know and then now he did kind of did a podcast he did a podcast on the side and doing his own thing and building his own brand and now they're like hey you want to try out for like a weekend shift and he's like no like I already have a following now you know what I mean and he's like you know these same people that were like we don't want to let you on the air and all that are all of a sudden like hey you want to come you know help us out well <laughs> What's funny too is when I grew up listening to radio, well, first I want to ask you, were you a fan of like morning radio growing up in like the nineties and two thousands? Was there like a show you listened to? Uh, yeah. And it, and it was a shock dog. It was T man in the morning uh, from Q 93. And then we also had uh, the uh, Tom Likas that played out so there too. And I this actually is, listened to that too. This is going to like shock you, but I'm like a huge fan of T man. Cause what happened was in 2008, <laughs> I went to San Francisco with my uncle to, um, uh -huh. I went to San Francisco with my uncle just for like a vacation. I went to Los Angeles and we drove up and we were in this like really run down apartment, like, or, um, motel. I shouldn't really be talking bad about my uncle paying for a vacation, but it wasn't a nice <laughs> like, motel. It was really near the water. It smelled like the wharf. And I remember I'm like, let me see what's on the radio. And the last person had on Wild 94.9, and that's when T-Man was on, and he was just yelling. And I I listened to the last year he was on, and all the shows are online. It's fascinating that you said that because I'm like uh -huh. the I'm like the biggest T-Man fan. It's fascinating. That, I trust that that's fascinating you say that to me, too, because I don't know a ton of people that usually know who he is, you know, especially around, like, my age, you know? So that's I, I love that. But, yeah, I, it was just on, like, my parents, you know, would listen to him. And so I really probably had no business at that age listening to him. But, like, yeah, I mean, he was the guy in the morning that I remember, and him and Terry Free. <laughs> well, honestly, that's the way to do radio, though, is because mm -hmm. here's how I view it. I think there's a place for... Not shock jock radio, but to say something that's a good opinion. So, for example, let's say, what would be a good example? That you should cancel uh, Matt Lauer and be very mm -hmm. passionate about how much of a piece of garbage Matt Lauer is. So, like, I think, like, what T-Man did or Tom Likas or Mank or Howard, I think that format can work because it's working in Tampa at the bone, but you have to be careful about what you complain about. You can't talk about a woman's sex life anymore. You can't make fun of people that have autism, but if you rip into scumbags in the news, the format works because people say that Shock Jock Radio is dead. It's just, it's being done by Gen Xers who, like you said last night on social media, all these people live in the 90s. Mm -hmm. edgy radio can work but you have to like you know like 
make sure it's not offensive towards people that don't deserve it. Yeah, I, I like that take on it. It's kind of like the same way, just to meet, you know, comedians in general. You know what I mean? They're not the same, but there's still comedians out there. And what I find fascinating too, I don't know if you notice this at the morning show boot camp, but all the people that are the loudest are the most quiet oh, every time. Interesting. I, I don't know what, you know, I was able, I wasn't able to see at many of the sessions. I'm curious, but I, I love hearing everybody's feedback on it. I'm curious. Well, what do you mean by that? Not well during the uh, sessions, they're doing their on air show, but just not mm -hmm. in full drive. Some of them, some of these guys, man, the ones that have been in it forever, not the new people, some of the ones that have been in it forever, like they can never turn off their zany morning. It would be like if T-Man was going around going, hey guys, like, like you know that all those guys turned it off, but there's some people at the boot camp that can't turn it off, but that's a side note. But what I'm saying is like at the bar, like when I met you and you gave me the mm -hmm. Radio Fam D, Cal, I wasn't as outgoing as I am now. And then if you see like, some of the people that are like syndicated, they're the biggest introverts ever. And it's kind of relaxing to be at the boot camp. Oh, yeah. Because it's like you're expecting them to like want to rant about the news and be funny and have a one liner when they order a drink. And it's like, no, everyone's just quiet. It's almost kind of weird. And, um, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean because even um, on one of the nights when we were there, it was all quiet at the bar right there. And one of my friends was like, do these guys um, work in radio? I was like, I think so. And he like, because he's like, it's too quiet. Like, what's going on? And I think, yeah, nobody really wanted to like start the conversation. So he just kind of gets up and is like, hey, everybody, like, let's start, you know, talking and, you know, kind of take somebody to go in there. And that's kinda, and that's what's interesting that you mentioned the introverts and, and that's me too. And it's it's funny. Like, the, I think it's just like the, they're just like, I'm learning just very creative people. And that's what I find fascinating about like, so not only my account, but you know, there's the accounts like women in radio and like um, women on air and just all these other big accounts that have been growing. Like not only are they like ran by women, but they're like introverted women, like women in radio is like, you know, a very, you know, established account and has been, you know, she's got over 10 K followers and just, you know, they do these conferences and have done these amazing things. And, you know, she's like very, you know, I look, I'm very shy. I needed a way to make friends and, so I just think that's so cool. And so it's been interesting too that, you know, you're right. Like some of the most introverted people that I've seen are, uh, yeah, the ones creating these like amazing, you know, productions. And honestly, the ones that are um, the same as me are the ones that I am close to. Like I am friends with Woody and Menace and I'm not name dropping, but I'm saying like the ones that are very quiet at the boot camp are the ones that I'm always like drinking with. A lot of times because I'm shy and I feel a little awkward, it's the ones that are really hyper at the bar that have to let you know that they're a top 40 afternoon DJ. That's when I get on, on they're, they're like, do you have your own show? And I'm like, well, I, I work all the shows on a weekend. Oh, but you don't have your own show. And I'm like, Sorry, bro. I, I can't flex like you. It's the ones that like have to brag and they, they almost order a drink with their radio voice. It's man. After I'm like yeah. 10 beers in, it's a fascinating watch. <laughs> oh, totally. Was that your first year going? That was mine. I, um, so I, uh, was, uh, intern for Don Anthony in 2013 and 2014. Oh, okay. And, uh, I've, I don't know for sure. I don't want to go on record and say it, but I do know when I entered in 2013, I was 19 and I was really happy to be there and nobody else was my age. Everybody was old. So I don't know if I was the first intern, but I was his intern in 2013 and 2014. Then I didn't go in 15 and I went in 16 and 17 and 18 and then this year. So I went to the ones in Atlanta and then the one in Illinois three years ago. And uh, I love seeing more millennials there because I remember I felt mm -hmm. so like, I think once millennials like our age began getting morning shows and shows, it made it more comfortable for me because I just felt mm -hmm. like I was around all my cool uncles talking about their radio jobs because I was literally the only millennial. So it was like, I'm like, hi guys, can I, I, I think it's like this because I'm very hyper, but I think it's like this. It's like they were sort of like bragging more because I was just an intern, but now that I'm a mm. host and I work in a top 20 market and you got a huge brand, I feel like we're accepted more and they want to talk to us more because we have more in common with them now. That makes sense. Now, do you, did you feel this last year that there was a, that you got more of the millennials or like, when did you see the shift uh, or are I you still thinking that it still needs to, it was 2018 in Chicago, 2017 okay. and 2016 Atlanta, man, that was, man, some of the Uber rides, it was a wild, <laughs> wild time. I mean, it was, I mean, I don't even, not that I don't remember it. I remember it, but it's just, it was 
those were like crazy because that was Atlanta. But Chicago, it's like mm-hmm. 2018. I remember I was like, wow, there was a big breakthrough. Because I remember I was sharing a room with, I'll give him a shout out, Randy from, he was from the Woody show, but now he's working for the NFL and I'm really proud of him. He's making like four times the money. He's a Randy Chavez is like one of my favorite dudes. Like he's one of my favorite millennials in radio. He's great. And we shared a, a hotel room at the Renaissance Hotel uh, in 2018 and like we were like wow there's a lot of people our age that's awesome okay okay good to know because yeah n- now i think we're at, we it's like the goal is to start tapping in now to the ones that are even you know the generation below us now because they're getting into radio and i mean i see them on these i'm always surprised at these broadcasting schools that follow the account and there's always groups of young radio people that are interested in radio you know it's crazy and i think because i really believe in good karma and good energy because one of the things that I really self sabotaged myself early on was that I would project my insecurities onto others in my early 20s when I had to keep working promotions to get on air but once I like began going into the law of attraction and working out I've had much better karma so I would say I, I'm pretty sure you would agree with this if people are afraid that Gen Z's are now going to be showing up to the boot camp, that's such bad energy because then you're just most likely going to get replaced by them. I really think that we could have a huge movement, and I might just be in a imaginary world, but I think there's no, a movement I- where they could literally coach us because they're someday they're going to retire, and radio's not going anywhere. Absolutely, especially like you know with like the TikTok stuff. I mean, even myself, I'm. I'm- struggle myself to get original TikToks up. And I'm just like, ah, you know, I wish I had like a teenager that could just follow me around and just make TikToks all day for me. <laughs> and I think there's like a huge, um, there's huge potential in TikTok because radio people are like the only people that are not doing the like trends. Like I love TikTok because it's, it's like eating McDonald's. Like it's fine. It's just, it's whatever. It's like McDonald's mm-hmm. of TV. I like it. But the problem is plagiarism is just out of this world on TikTok. Not with radio people, but like with the headbutting trend. I, I, I seriously wish I could just lock that headbutting trend thing where they go do to do and then they turn to the side. Like I, if I never saw that again, I'd be a happy man. I'm so <laughs> sick of that. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then the one that kept getting rehashed every time was Thanksgiving week when it talked about seeing your ex at the bar in your hometown. I think I may have saw 100,003 of the one saying, back in the day, me and you, baby, we used to have fun. And it was like, okay, we got it. You see your exes when you go to a bar. I, I just think <laughs> radio can take over TikTok because we're actually like coming up with our own material. Like, I just think like radio really needs to post. I'm telling all my Gen X radio coworkers, I'm like, go on TikTok and just post your video because it's something different. Exactly. I know. And it's fun to see the few handful of radio people that are taking TikTok, you know, and cutting, you know, owning a niche out of it. And it, it's really cool to see the potential with that and be like, okay, but they got it. So would you ever want to do like the next morning show boot camp in like 10 years? Have you ever thought about like where you could go with this? Um, well, it's funny because you, uh, originally I, when I was kind of, you know, things were coming together and it was becoming a community. I remember like a few years ago, I even wrote up on like a, you know, like a whiteboard or something. And I was like, okay, it'd be so cool to just do, you know, as the radio fam to give away like a flyaway to morning show boot camp and make it like a, you know, VIP thing or something, you know, and then at the same time, eventually years from now to have some kind of like radio fan conference or something like that. And I'm just kind of like, whatever, you know, so then I just, you know, came to this one this year and, uh, you know, just seemed to meet and network with all the right people. And then, um, me and Don just like really hit it off and, that's why, like, I appreciate him. And I, I told him this to his face, you know, that I'm always, like, a little nervous, you know, if somebody's, like, you know, doing something in, in the industry and I'm going to have a conversation with them. And it's, like, you know, an old white guy, you know, because I'm just, you know, from the, what the typical stuff. But talking to him is that he he wants to, you know, invest in talent and move the industry forward and knows that, like, hey, I need younger help. I need, you know, a way to tap into that and and also allows me to be the social media expert because you know a lot of people will be like hey you know you're great at what you do this is awesome but do it my way <laughs> and it's like okay well why you know why were you talking so our personality just like mat- matched really well so i'm just like honored that i even get to yeah. be a, you know have a little bit of influence in this next one you know so 
you know, I, I hope you like, like I said, with this next year, I kind of hope just to bring a little, like you're telling people just a little sexy to the event, you know, it's a, obviously not going to be perfect, but just, you know, spice it up just a little bit, you know, and hopefully one day it's something really, here's, really cool. You know, here's what I think radio is not doing at all that it needs to do is that it's not, it's not that just cause everybody goes, they're not growing talent and they're not, but they're growing talent where there's full-time jobs my thing is this, we can only hear the same songs over and over again, and we can only hear the same replays of talk segments over and over again. Like, if you're going to pay a board op or an on-air talent the minimum money, why not just do, like, the Adult Swim of radio and just do, like, what Adult Swim did 20 years ago where you do free-for-all? Because, like, if you're not going to pay us a lot, we should at least have more power. I don't know if that makes sense because then they're going to – because we're all getting – Like more creative power? Yeah, mm-hmm. like, we're all getting older, and it's like radio's doing the same thing. And I feel like there's so many ideas that just aren't given a chance. T- totally. And, and oh, it's, I, the ones that are – or that do grow, it's always, like, a self – done thing it's always somebody doing it on the side and then either a you know after they get fired you know b you know the radio wants in on it after it's grown and yeah it's just that they always want to take a chance at once it's too late it's like if you invested it on it up front imagine how far it'd go you know well the thing too that i like everything you share because it's just not it's not biased and it's very middle of, of the road and fair but the meme mm-hmm. that you shared that i retweeted that i needed everyone to see was the one when you said that an on-air talent throws an idea and then doesn't get credit i see that in any business ever and i think it's i think it's one of the scummiest things you can ever do is take a bunch of ideas and then never give the person credit i think it's so low brow and it's so like small energy like you're not a you're not a person i want to hang out with if you're going to take all yeah. the, if you're going to take all the ideas and then claim it as your own but then karma is going to reach them because what's going to happen is the company is going to be like wow that was an amazing idea come up with four more and then the person that took it's going to be like um what yeah exactly and they're like and then they're going to be like well actually somebody can is paying for my ideas more that are outside of radio <laughs> you know what i mean so like yeah <laughs> Howard said it best. Howard was talking about growing radio talent maybe a year ago. And he's like, man, I would just go anywhere where I could get on air and just promote my podcast. And this is coming from Howard who hated podcasts 10 years ago. He said, I would just go on air and scream from the rooftops about my podcast in between breaks. And he goes, I would just get as much talking time as possible. And I thought like hearing that from the goat and that being like what I'm doing and what everyone that you promote is doing. It's like, I like, even if things are tough right now, we are doing the right thing. Oh, absolutely. Like I, um, I love everybody that's kind of doing their podcast and building their own brand. And that's why, like, I love like you, you know, handed me your business card there, you know, and with the, you know, and I love like the name of the podcast and everything. And yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a brand. It's noticeable. And, and that stuff stuck out to me. And I was like, who were the people that were coming, you know, walking around that actually were equipped with their business cards and knew what this was about. And, and, you know, and I'm, I'm seeing um, a lot now, um, you know, after talking to people, you know, like intern John and Shelby sauce and stuff like that of people doing these podcasts to get opportunities. You know what I mean? That you're a, to get practice and then, you know, or to be like, look, I want to eventually be on the morning show. So I want to prove to somebody that I, I can do that. And, you know, there, I've heard multiple stories of people getting jobs because, you know, they've already done this. And I think that that's really the way to go now in radio is to really start establishing your own show or brand outside of the radio, especially if you don't have like a full-time radio job or whatever, because you can just kind of take your brand everywhere. Whereas the radio brands, you know, they're just, they kind of die right there in the market, you know? So I have a decent sized fan base. I have like a cult following, but I'm very proud of it. But you have like Mm -hmm. a huge fan base. So when this gets retweeted and we promote it and people are listening at this point, what would you like to say to any radio program or anybody out there? Is there like a thing that you've been like wanting to say about the radio business? Oh man, so many things, but (laughs) if I could, yeah, if I could sum it up, um, really, I mean, really the biggest thing I've been hounding got to everybody is just to own your own brand, you know, like your, your own personal brand. Uh, It's so they're surprising to me how many radio people don't even just have like their website, you know, and that's just, and we don't have to overthink the website thing, you know, it can just be a place where it's a landing page, you know, I mean, you can do them, set them up for very, very cheap, or it's just a place that it directs, you know, where your social media is, where your air checks are, you know, that go live over on SoundCloud, 
um, where your YouTube video links are. And you should just be able to walk up to somebody and say, hey, I'm at so-and-so.com or whatever show.com. And here's everything you can find of me. I mean, it's your, it's your digital resume. I mean, you know, with everything being so digitally ba- content based now anyway, you know, it's just a great place for all that to live. And I just think that, like I said, with these, uh, you know, radio brands really not investing in themselves and kind of growing. That's why I say just do it yourselves. And, you know, that's why I'm always kind of talking about people like Carla Marie and Anthony or whatever, because I'm, I eventually, I truly believe that, you know, there's going to be more stations that are like, Hey, can we put your show on our station rather than people being, you know, somebody like them being like, Hey, please, can we work at your station? You know, so So, own your own brands. So now where can people find all your work? Um, The easiest place to go is just the radio fam.com because that is a link to all the social media, the podcast, which you can also, you can watch the podcast or you can listen to it and there's a store there. So yeah, everything's all there. The radio fam.com. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I feel like even though I had to reschedule this twice because during November radio, it's just crazy busy, but I feel like this was perfect timing to have you on. I And I'm not just saying this. I, I really like what you do because I had to take off some of the uh, parody accounts on social media because it was just so... I know that there's a lot of flaws in radio, but memes about it just make me sadder when I'm at work at five in the morning. So your positivity Mm -hmm. and just how you're honest, keep up the good work. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And like I said, hearing those kind of things is the reason why I keep doing this. So thank you. Well, keep up the good work and I shall see you at the next morning show boot camp. I can't wait. Awesome. Thank you. No problem.